In this video, we'll be looking at um, some exponent rules. We're going to start with 6.3, 0, and negative exponents. And our central question will be, how do I... Simplify zero and negative exponents. Um, for this, it's going to be just easier if we just move straight into some examples. And we'll just do a bunch of them, and we'll start to see how this becomes clear. Um, so for zero exponents, Zero exponent just makes anything that's raised to the zero power equal one. So for example, number one, if I had five to the zero, that would equal one. And we're done. If I had, let's say I had um, negative three to the zero, that would equal one. And we're done. Now the location of the parentheses is very important. Um, so let's do one with a variable. Say I had 3 like that, and then I had 3x to the 0 like that. So I'm looking at both these problems kind of like at the same time. For this problem, 3 and the x, both of these together are being raised to the 0 power, so that's 1. On number 4, only only the x, the x is being raised to the 0, so this would equal 3 times 1, because the x to the 0 becomes 1, the 3 stays the same, so that would be 3. So say we had x squared y to the 0, and say we had x squared y to the 0, like so. One has parentheses, one doesn't. Well, on this one, the entire thing's being raised to the 0, x squared y to the 0, so that's equals 1. The entire idea is being raised to 0. But on this one, only the y to the 0 is being raised. Only the y is being raised to the 0. So I'd end up with x squared times 1, which is just x squared. You should be very careful about where those parentheses are located. So let's say we did, let's do two more. So we did 8,004 times x to the 0, and we did parentheses 8,004 x close parentheses raised to the 0. What would these two equal? Well, this one does not have parentheses, so I have to treat the x to the 0 by itself. So this is all by itself, because there's no parentheses. So I'm going to say 8,004 times 1, which is equal to 8,004. Now on number 8, box my answer. on number 8, this entire piece right here is being raised to the 0. So when everything's being raised to zero, we just say it equals one. And then we're done. So the zero power is pretty easy in the sense that um, everything equals one, but we have to be careful of where our parentheses are located. The parentheses tell us exactly who is being raised to the zero power. Okay. So now we're going to switch gears to negative exponents. So you can pause right here and do page one of the assignment, or you can do all the notes together. Either way works for me. But we're going to switch to negative exponents, which is page two. Okay, so for our negative exponents, negative exponents just move things um, around a fraction. So for my best example would be to say if I had I'm going to do a kind of complicated one so we can see how everything's moving. 
It said x squared y to the negative 3 over z to the negative 4. Well, anything that has a negative up exponent is upstairs will move down, and anything that has a negative exponent is downstairs will move up. Anything that has a positive exponent just stays where it's located. Let's do a t to the 6, positive 6, just so we can show that. So which ones are moving? That one's moving, and that one's moving. Because they have the negative exponent, that's what's moving them. The x squared and the t to the 6 are going to stay the same. So I'll put x squared, because that one's not moving. It's got a positive exponent, so it stays put. I'm going to put t to the 6. Not moving, positive exponent, stays put. Now my y to the negative 3, since it started up, we're going to move it down. Like that. And my z to the negative 4, it starts down. Since it's a negative, we're moving it up. There it is. And that's all negative exponents are going to do. They just move things that are up, down, and move things that are down, up. So let's do a bunch of examples. Um, so we'll start with like a 5 to the negative 2. Well, since there's no fraction right now, when we move it down, we're just going to have to put a 1 on the numerator and then move this down to the denominator. Just like that. Try another one, just like this one. So go 3 to the negative 4. What would this look like? Well, we would move, it will look just like the one we did in number 2. So the 3 to the negative 4 moves down. Now it's 3 to the 4, and we have to put a 1 on top to kind of hold the place. Let's do a couple more like that. Try 6 to the negative 2 and 7 to the negative 8. What would those look like? This become 1 over 6 to the second power, and this would become 1 over 7 to the 8th power. That's all that does. Now, what if we have to move things that have a negative exponent in the denominator? So let's check that out. So say I had 1 over 12 to the negative 3. Well, the negative, since it's in a denominator, the negative will move it up to the numerator, so it just becomes 12 to the third power. Say so I had um, 1 over 8 to the negative 2. Well, this moves it up, and we have 8 to the second power. That's that for negative exponents with numbers. Let's do both of these ideas that we just practiced at the same time. So let's say I had 5 to the negative 2 over 7 to the negative 3. What would that do? Well, the 5 has a negative, so it's up top, so it'll move down. The 7 has a negative exponent, it's in the bottom, so it'll move up. So they're really just switching places um, so that they no longer have that negative exponent. And then we're done. 7 to the third power over 5 to the second power. Let's do like three more, but we're going to make them more like that number one at the top. So let's say I had x squared y to the negative three. So I say I had x squared over y to the negative three. And let's do a last one. We're going to do x squared y to the negative three over z to the 8th times p to the negative 7. These will be the last three we do. <clears throat> so if you want to pause right here and try these on your own, feel free to. So the x squared, where will it be located? Is it going to stay where it's at, or is it going to move down? Well, it's a positive exponent, so it stays where it's at. And then since the y has a negative exponent, we're going to move it down to our denominator. And we're done.
So on uh, number 10, x is a positive exponent, so it stays where it's at. y is in the denominator, has a negative exponent, so we're going to move it up. We're going to bring it up top like so. And we're done. And then for this last one, um, things with positive exponents stay put. Things with negative exponents move up or move down. So let's do that. So x has a positive exponent, so it stays up. Z has a positive exponent, so it stays where it's at, so it's going to stay down. Stays where it's at. So it, start, it had positive, it started up top, so it stays up top. Has a positive exponent, started down low, so it stays down low. Now, why the negative 3? We're in the numerator, we're up top, and has a negative exponent, so we got to move it down. So it's negative in the top, it moves down. P to the negative 7, we're in the denominator, we're in the bottom, so since we're in the bottom, negative exponent, we're going to move up. And that's it. Make this look more like an exponent. And that's how we deal with negative exponents just helping us move things around that fraction bar. So thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.